morning. Welcome to the worship of Almighty God here at Wexford Community Presbyterian Church. We are delighted to have you here. It is a wonderful day to worship God together and a wonderful time to be together. Thank you for joining us today. Let's worship God. Come out of sadness from wherever I'm broken hearted, let rescue begin. Come find your mercy, oh sinner, come near. Earth has no sorrow, heaven can heal. Earth has no sorrow, heaven can heal. So lay down your delight to come together and worship, even when we can't do that physically. Uh, and so we take a little bit of time at each and every worship service to recognize that we are part of something bigger and to pass the peace of Christ. We do this by pause, asking you to pause the video, call someone, text someone, reach out to someone, uh, and to really be connected, to, to know that we're all in this together. So take a moment to uh, let someone know how much you appreciate them. Uh, again, call, text, email, do something just to say, Hello, I hope you're having a great day and I thank God for you. So let's do that now and let's pass the peace of Christ. One other quick word is just to, to update you on the survey that we took this week. If you, many of you probably saw that we sent out a survey, uh, just asking for some feedback on the online service. We've gone through this weird time in our, our history as a church where we've had seven months that we haven't been able to meet together. And this is unprecedented. It's not, it's not just a Wexford thing. This is an everybody thing. And there is no game plan for it. And so it was helpful to hear some feedback. And the feedback was really good, really helpful. There was some, I mean, there was, it was, all kinds of uh, ideas uh, and ex expressions about this time. And it's a frustrating time for people. It's an exciting time for some people. And uh, regardless of what it is, it's definitely a unique, unique time. And know that during this time, we as a church are trying to do our best to be the body of Christ. We've been forced to recognize that 
the church is bigger than a building and bigger than a service and bigger than a, a specific space or a tradition that we're used to. And that doesn't mean that those things are bad, that we have to get rid of them. But it does mean that even in when we don't have access to those things, that doesn't stop us from being the church. And so as we've tried over these last seven months to be the church in new ways and to be the church uh, in ways that are not encumbered by the limitations that we have put on us by this situation in history that we're a part of, it's also helped us to know that some of the lifting, some of the, the previous limitations have enabled us to do other things. And so as we continue to grow as a church and, and develop, know that uh, we, we aren't trying to get rid of old things, uh, but we also are trying to be open to new things. And whatever the coming months and years look like for the church, that we will continue to endeavor to be the body of Christ in the world. And we thank you for your patience in this time. We thank you for your feedback and constructive criticism and, and, and praise. All of those things are really helpful for us to know how best to be the body of Christ. Because we're all in this together. This is not about one person or one group of people uh, determining what the church should be. This is about us collectively as a community doing our best to be the body of Christ in the world. Whether or not we're able to do that in this space or in a virtual space. Thank you for being part of this, and, and thank you for continuing to be part of this community. We can't do this without one another, and we can only do this with God. So let's keep doing it together. Good morning, guys. Okay, so I'm excited. Do you know why? Well, check out my neat coin collection here. I just got my allowance, and I've been counting up all the coins I have, and I haven't decided what to buy with it yet. But it's, it's gonna be great, it's gonna be great. Hmm, but you know, I wanted to ask you something. This might seem like a simple question, or it might be a little tricky. Where, where did this money come from? What do you, what do you think? There's a couple answers you could give. Lots of answers, knowing you guys. You could say the money came from mom and dad, maybe, right? Okay, or you might say the money came from a store. Or maybe you're going to be really smart you're going to say it came from a bank. Or maybe you're going to think next, next level. Car passing by, sorry. Maybe you'll think next, next level and say it came from a manufacturer was created, right? But where did it really come from? It's hard to say. And then another question would be, like, who does this belong to now? You could say it's mine. But if I buy something and I give it to somebody, if I give it to, let's say I buy something at the dollar store, now it's the dollar stores, right? Or I could give one of these coins to you guys and then it'd be yours. Maybe I could give it back to the bank. Does it belong to the bank? Hmm. And then here's another question. Okay. Where do you guys come from? Maybe you'll say you're a citizen of a certain place, like America, okay? Or, well, you come from Pennsylvania. Maybe, you know, you'll say you come from your parents, which is also true. But ultimately, we all come from God, right? He created us in his own image, his most precious and wonderful masterpiece. We belong to him, and he's glad to call us his children. In the gospel lesson for today, Jesus encountered some people who tried to trick him. They tried to trick him with a question. They asked him, hey Jesus, do you think people should pay taxes to the government? And now these church leaders that asked him this question, they did not like Jesus very much. And they wanted to trap him, thinking that he might get in trouble if he said that the taxes weren't important. And then he also might get in trouble if he said that the people of God should pay taxes. The Jews might be angry because not everyone liked the Roman government, the people that were in ruling. But Jesus, being the son of God and far more clever than these Pharisees, gave them a third answer. He had them show him a coin, okay? And he asked them, whose picture is on this coin? Well, the ruler, Caesar, was pictured on the coin. So Jesus pointed out that money could go back to the people in charge of the government. Give this back to Caesar. But Jesus also said 
give to God what is God's. But what belongs to God? Well, everything. We recognize that we need to use um, our money on things like taxes and groceries and clothes and toilet paper and whatever else we need to survive. <laughs> but God, he deserves so much more to that. We need to give him our whole lives. That's what belongs to him. And now, how do we do that? It's through loving others, showing how much we care about each other. Because um, when you show that you're caring about other people with your life, you're showing how much you care about God. We can give to God by uh, giving our tithes and offering, by praying to Him, talking to Him, by reading our Bibles. There's lots of ways for God to be in every aspect of your life, and that's what He deserves. We belong to God, just like just like Jesus was saying, you know, whose face is on this coin? Give what belongs to the ruler back to the ruler. Give what belongs to God back to God. We recognize that he made us. He made us and so we belong to him. Coins and money and taxes, those things are necessary, but those things don't last. Eventually, these things fade away. But what we're giving in our relationship with God that's a forever thing. And he loves us so much. And he has given us all that we have. And he wants us to live meaningful lives. He wants us to love each other. He wants us to take care of our surroundings, of our people, of our things. And he wants us to be a part of his family. And he gives us the promise of heaven. And... Um, I just think that's a wonderful thing to remember. Give to God what is God's, which is our whole selves. And once again, you do that by doing things like showing care and love for each other, other images of God, by showing care and love to God, praying to him, reading your Bible, taking care of his other creations. Maybe you have some Maybe you have some pets at home, some plants. Why don't we thank God for all that he's given us? Bow your eyes, close your heads. Repeat after me, let's pray. Dear God, thank you for loving us. Thank you for allowing us to be a part of your family. Help us to love and serve you, God. Pray all this in your name. Amen. See you guys. Have a good day. As we have resumed our in-person worship uh, and come to a turning point in terms of our online worship, I think it's important to look back and reflect on these last seven months where we've been almost exclusively online, where we really were exclusively online before a few weeks ago. And to see that not as lost time. I, I think that we can get overwhelmed by this pandemic and the quarantine and everything that's happened. And we envisioned it a lot like it was... Um, we were in a holding pattern. I think that we approached this because we didn't know how long it would last. A lot of us approached it the way that we do. If you're at the airport and a, a flight is about to board, if you've ever been on a flight, that uh, as soon as they start the boarding, everyone stands up and holds their bags and gets in line, even though they know, I'm not going to get on this plane for another 20 minutes. But they all stand in line as though they have to rush to get there or that their seat won't be saved for them when they get there. I think that's how a lot of us approach this, that we kind of held everything where we could and had no plan. And now that we've gotten this deep into it, we realize, oh, we, we're not going to get on this plane anytime soon. We may need to sit down. I think we have, there, for many of us, we feel like we've lost those seven months. I want us to recognize as a church that we have not lost seven months. I want us to look back at some of the things that we've done over that time and see the beauty of what this church has been doing. The proclamation of God, the joy that has been experienced, and the varied nature of how we have worshipped together. I went back through seven months of worship services and I picked out some, some parts uh, to, to remind us of, of where we've been. There were so many. Uh, I, at one point, this video that I had put together was about 40 minutes long. I cut it down to four. So even the 40, I felt like it was hard. Even that was, was really tricky to, to go through hours and hours and hours of services to get it down to 40. 
I was so excited to see all the different faces of all the different people who've contributed so many different things and all the different places that people have been contributing from. But I got it down to four. So I want to take a moment for us to look back on what we've done over the last seven months, knowing that what we do over the next seven months will be just as amazing. Know that we have not wasted time. Know that God has not left us. Know that God has done an amazing thing with us in these last seven months and God is continuing to do a new thing through us. Let us look back and, and praise God for what God has done in this church and have hope that God is doing good things to us even now, even as we're standing there holding our luggage, wondering when this thing's going to be over, that God is saying, you can put your luggage down because there's good stuff going on right now. And one day we'll get on that plane. We'll get back to where we are. But for now, let's notice what God is doing right now that's good. So look back at this and let's see and give thanks to God for all that God has done for us in these last six months. Hello! Hello, welcome to church! <laughs>
Yeah, uh, yeah. I think it's a uh, group of people that uh, follow, that believe in Jesus and uh, are out trying to love people as much as humanly possible, even when it's uncomfortable. As we say every week, one of the most important parts of our worship is recognizing our trust in God, recognizing that God has given us everything that we have and everything that we need, and recognizing that we do truly put our trust not in other things or things that fade away, but in God, who is eternal, knowing that all of the things that we have are given to us by God, not to make our lives better, but to make life better for everyone, to do our best to love one another whether those gifts are financial or gifts of time or gifts of talent or gifts of energy or gifts of creativity, all of those things can work together to help make this world a better place for people and to help it be a better reflection of the world that is to come, that we glimpse heaven when we better show God's love in this space. And so as we turn to God for a time of offering, again, I would invite you to reflect on what it is that you have to contribute. Uh, any financial contributions, if you would like to give to the church, you can give online. Uh, you just go to wexfordcpc.org slash give, and there's buttons right there to give online. If you have donations you'd like to send into the church, you can send them directly to the church office. We deposit those every week. But I want you also to think about this as more than just financial giving, but ways in which you can give creatively, ways in which you can give through feedback, through expertise, if you have any gifts. there. We as a church are so diverse in terms of what we're trying to do and what we need to do. We need all the gifts of all the people. One of the things that has been the best part of these seven months is being able to see the very, the many, many gifts of this community, of people of all ages. There's been so much art over this time. There's been so much uh, uh, just wonderful opportunities of giving and, and so many voices that we haven't heard in our normal situation that we are able to hear from in this space. So as we turn to God for this time of offering, please consider what it is that you have that you can offer. And don't be afraid to offer it. We need it. We would love to share together in the beauty of what God is doing in our lives. So with that in mind, let us present to God our tithes and our offerings. For the vapor of it all It's a chasing of the substance of the form so pale and thin let the veil of the earth be stretched again holy I'll be all the holy trees clap their hands for they dance for you Heaven taught the hearts of men We can feel it from within The beauty of it Sing all our 
light bring this world to life come like rain like breath like springtime bring this world to life good morning please join me for a time of prayer Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, in Christ you taught us to pray, and promised that we would receive all that we ask in his name. Hear now our prayers for the Church Universal, for this congregation, its mission and ministry, for the healing of the earth, for peace and justice in the world, for nations and leaders, for our local community, for the poor and oppressed, for the bereaved and lonely, for all who need healing. Guide us, O God, by your Holy Spirit, that all of our prayers and all of our lives may serve your will and show your love, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who taught us how to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning. This week's scripture reading is from Matthew chapter 22, verses 15 through 22. Listen to the word of the Lord. Then the Pharisees met to find a way to trap Jesus in his words. They sent their disciples along with the supporters of Herod to him. Teacher, they said, we know that you are genuine and that you teach God's way as it really is. We know that you are not swayed by people's opinions because you don't show favoritism. So tell us what you think. Does the law allow people to pay taxes to Caesar or not? Knowing their evil motives, Jesus replied, why do you test me, you hypocrites? Show me the coin used to pay the tax. And they brought him a denarian. Whose image and inscription is this? He asked. Caesar's, they replied. Then he said, Give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, and to God what belongs to God. When they heard this, they were astonished, and they departed. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So this passage is... Wait, hang on a second. There we go. So today we're going to talk about money. And since we're going to talk about money, I figured I better dress up a little bit. This passage is one of those familiar passages uh, that we have heard of before. Uh, we know the King James Version of it, which is the render unto Caesar, that which is Caesar's. And Jesus is talking about money here. It's important for us to remember that Jesus talks about money more than anything else. Uh, there's no particular sin that Jesus likes to focus on. Jesus is usually talking about the church and money uh, and how both of those things are a struggle for us. So he's very critical of how the church is run. He's very critical of how money uh, encapsulates people's lives. So in this passage, uh, we see the uh, people are trying to catch him again, trying to trick him. So the, the church leaders are trying to, catch, trying to trap Jesus, trying to get him to say something that is worthy of him getting in trouble by the Romans. And so uh, the question this time is, is it okay to pay taxes to Caesar? Because they know if that he says no, then they're going to be able to uh, say that he's an insurrectionist, that, that he is against Caesar, that he is uh, saying that it's okay to not follow uh, Caesar, and then he'll get in trouble and get uh, either thrown in jail by the Romans or killed by the Romans, which is their ultimate goal at this point. Uh, and Jesus' response is not what they expect. And you can even see this by the way that they react at the end. So he says, well, hang on a second. So do you pay taxes to... The, so they ask him, is it okay to pay taxes to Caesar? And he says, well, let me see a coin. Do you have a coin? And they pull out a coin. They pull out a, a denarius. And the denarius was the, the coin of the realm, the coin of the Roman Empire. And it was emblazoned with the face of Tiberius Caesar, 
who is the Caesar at this point. And so it would have a picture of his face, and then underneath it would say um, the, the son of Augustus. And, and by this point, the Caesars were gods. So basically the son of God. So uh, this is authorized by the image of the son of God. And so there are all kinds of things going on. And, and Jesus says, well, whose picture is on that? Well, Caesar's picture's on it. Okay, give it back to Caesar. Why do you even have that here? And they're amazed by that response. That's not what they expect. So there's a lot going on in this. This is a passage that is often used to say, pay your taxes. See, even Jesus says we should give back to the government. That's not quite what this thing is talking about. So let's look at, let's do, uh, first off, I would just encourage you, go back and watch Rama's children's sermon again. That's pretty, it's, it's fantastic. Rama is, uh, says stuff in his children's sermon that's better than anything I'm going to tell you in the next however long we talk. But let me show you something. So Rama showed you some coins. I want to show you some coins too. So here we go. We've got a nickel. So it's got the Monticello on the back and it's got, who's that? Thomas Jefferson. So Thomas Jefferson on our nickel, we've got the face of Thomas Jefferson. It says here, liberty and in God we trust. So if we were to give this coin to an alien and they were to read it and they saw this picture and it said in God we trust on it and then a picture of this guy, it doesn't say Thomas Jefferson on it. Who would they think is God? If they were to get this, this is a silver dollar with Susan B. Anthony on it. And it says, liberty in God we trust. If an alien were to get this, who do you think that they would think God is? Maybe this person? It doesn't say Susan B. Anthony on it, or maybe they would flip it over and say, why is there an eagle on the moon? This 1976 silver dollar is a really weird coin. Maybe they would get this coin. This isn't even an American. This is a coin from Belize, 50 cents from Belize. It's got Queen Elizabeth II on it. So, or maybe they would get this one, the penny. This penny has uh, In God We Trust on it and a picture of this guy. Again, if an alien were to see it, who do you think they would think God is? Maybe that. If you're like me, growing up in Pittsburgh, how many of you thought that this was the Mr. Rogers trolley on the back of the penny? Maybe I'm the only one. I still kind of think it looks like that. Here's another one. Maybe they got this coin that said it's just a bunch of bowling pins from Noble Manor Lanes. And on the back it says, no cash value. First off, I would like to say, what makes this, this goofy coin with an eagle on the moon, worth a dollar, and this worth nothing? because someone told us that this piece of metal is worth a dollar, which is quite a lot. And this piece of metal is worth a game of skee-ball. In terms of the actual makeup of these metals, not much different. Um, this weighs a little more, so maybe this is more, but let's take this a dime. This dime also with another face, and in God we trust. What makes this worth something and this not worth anything? So why am I showing these coins? Well, I do think it's important to recognize that the empire has a lot invested in the coins. The Roman Empire, the coins were an important thing because they were uh, a means of transaction between people, but they became a form of propaganda of helping you to think that your treasure was endorsed and empowered by Tiberius, who was the son of God. And so on every interaction that you had, you were reminded that I'm only able to have power in this little silver disc because of the face that's emblazoned on it. And even now, if I were to give this to you, you would look at this and you go, hey, a coin. Oh, wait a minute. Bowling pins don't mean anything powerful. If I want my coin to mean something, it better have the face of a president on it, like James Madison. Here's another weird one. Silver dollar. James Madison, 
it's pretty much the same size as a quarter because we don't know how to make coins in ways that are easy to distinguish. Um, so unless it, unless our coins have a face of someone on it, we act like they aren't valid. All of our coins have faces of people on it. And they all say, in God we trust on it. But the faces that we are showing our trust are rulers. Not unlike the empire. What Jesus is saying is not, he doesn't say, hey, the empire is evil, get rid of all those coins, throw them in the, in the, in the trash, and let's go off and form our own thing. He says, no, if, I mean, if, if Caesar wants a tax, give him a tax. But those things that he's telling you have value only have value because the empire says they have value. That little disc of silver really doesn't mean anything. So the power that is in this money, while it feels real, really doesn't mean anything. Money is just this piece of paper that it's a promissory note. Do you know what that means? That means that it's a note. It's a piece of paper where the government is saying, trust us, this is worth something. All the, the paper money that we have, even the coin of money, is just endorsed by the government to say, this has value. And what Jesus is saying in this is not straight up, it isn't important, because he isn't saying we should just shun this. But what Jesus is saying is we, we are part of this world, but none of that matters. If we put all our emphasis in money, all of that fades away. And what does matter is what we, where we put our energy, where we put our faith, where we put our trust. And if we're saying our trust belongs in the faces on our money, to solve our problems, whether that's in the Roman Empire believing that God has ordained Caesar to give us power and that Caesar is our salvation, that Caesar is Lord, which is everything that was happening at that point, or whether it's thinking that this plan of government that was devised 200 plus years ago was so perfect that we must strive to achieve that, and these people who came up with it were so perfect in their development of a governing system that the best way that we can rule our government is by trying to view these founding fathers as though they were divinely inspired and that they're the ones we worship. Now, if that sounds silly, it is silly, but if we look at our money, if we look at the way in which we use iconography in our empire, it does reflect a certain level of deification of some of our leaders, of raising our historical figures to an elevation that is almost godlike. And that's what Jesus is critical of. That's what Jesus is telling us here that we should be wary of. Jesus is not saying we should remove ourselves from society, but Jesus is also very clearly saying we should reserve for God the things that are of God. And the things that are of God are salvation, are grace, mercy, and worth. And if so, your salvation and worth are coming from the empire, that's a problem. If your uh, mercy and grace are only achieved through the empire, that's a problem. If you think the empire is what has given you the gifts that you have and what is going to save you, from the ravages of the future, that's a problem. The value that's given to the empire is only the value that we give it. But the value that's given to God is a true power that doesn't come from us. It comes from God. Jesus, when he talks about money, is critical of it. Not because money is bad. The phrase money is the root of all evil is not what Jesus says. Love of money is the root of all evil. The unsatiating desire for more money is the root of all evil. Because money is an idea. It's a concept. It's not a real thing. And what Jesus is saying is when we love an idea, a concept, a construct, that's just the social understanding, then it pulls our, our natural desire to love one another away. We don't care about each other if we care about money more. Don't be afraid of losing this, of losing these coins. 
Because if you do, you're going to miss out on what's important. So give to God what belongs to God, which is everything that is true, everything that is real, everything that is of value, of actual value. That is what belongs to God. When the people heard this, they were astonished. They were astonished, one, because Jesus had so deftly pointed out their faith in the empire over God. That Jesus had so handedly taken a trap that was laid out for Jesus. And not only did was, was ambivalent towards the empire, but was illustrating even more how they needed to show their faith in God. As we are people who seek to love God, let us do so with all that we have. Let us do so with what really matters. Let us come to the church not with trinkets, not with what's left over, but with our full selves. Let us deeply commit to what Jesus is doing in this world by trying to help as many people as we can, by trying to experience the goodness of this world, by going into the world to show God's love to everyone. Let us be people who put our trust not in coins, but in the love of God. Amen. So now it's time for us to go. It's time for us to j return back to our lives, return back to whatever our regular routines were for this day. 
knowing that, that God is doing something good for us. We don't go from this place to bring God into the world. Our goal is not to go bring God to a world that doesn't have God. Our goal is instead is to leave this place following God, going out into a world in which God is alive and active, bearing witness to what God is doing. We are not distributing God. We are recognizing God. Think of it as like a, a, a camp ranger who doesn't go into the, into the woods putting leaves down and putting wildlife, but goes instead and says, look at that, that's a ginkgo tree. Look at that, that's a salamander. Look at that, that's a, that's a fox. Helping us to see and understand the world around us. That's our role as Christians, that we go into the world, not bringing God, but going into the world saying, look at that's God. That's God there too. Look at what God's doing here. Look at this. So go from this place with that on your, on your mind, that we are there to, to look for and identify God and help others to see God too. We're the park rangers that God is sending out into the world to help proclaim what God is doing. So let's go from this place. And as you go, looking for God, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion and fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. Amen. Have a fantastic week. I hope that you are doing incredibly well. I hope that uh, if you get the chance, you can join us today for worship. But if not, you can join us next week. Uh, but thank you for being here for this online worship. And have a wonderful, wonderful week. Enjoy the fall. Enjoy the leaves. Enjoy everything about the season. It's my favorite season. Have a great week. We'll see you next time.